Hey, family, friends, loved ones. Hey, we're so grateful to have you. We want to welcome you to our broadcast, the King's Chamber. Uh, here we're part of the Healing House uh, Ministries, which is an online media ministry. And we're just here to be a blessing to you and to yours, hoping to reach somebody with the good news of Christ. Thank you for joining us. If you haven't subscribed to our channel already, go ahead. It's down here at the bottom of the screen. Go ahead, click subscribe, like the video. Let us know what you think about it. Be sure to comment. Also, uh, be sure to click the share button share this with your friends and with your families on other uh, media links as well so that we can help get the word out. Uh, if you want to be a blessing to us, uh, you can certainly feel free to use the Cash App. You'll see our icon from time to time on different video links and on our page. Uh, it's Cash App is going to be the dollar sign at Kingdom Admin HH. We just want to be a blessing to you. God bless you. We love you. One. All of the things that both you and I have done that made us unfit and unworthy of the grace and the mercy of God. Yet God in his goodness continues to stop by your room every morning, breathes in your ear, and he whispers, good morning. Y'all don't hear me? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that good morning is that push that you feel when you don't feel like getting out the bed and you get on up anyway. That's the Lord stopping by and saying good morning to you. Open your curtains and see the sun shining. See the birds flying. Even nature knows how to praise God. You mean you ain't got to praise for your God? If the robin can say thank you. Y'all going to make me act a fool by myself. If the robin can say thank you, I can do it too. Oh God, give God a praise in here. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I won't let no rock. Y'all came to play, I came to slay. I said, look at your doggone neighbor and tell them, I don't want no rock. Some of y'all still looking at me. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I don't want no rock to take my place. Now give God a praise. Like you the one that's got a praise for it. Like you the one that he saved. Like you the one that he healed. Like you the one that he gave another chance to. Praise him like you the one. Look at somebody and tell him you the one, you the one. Tell him you the one. Give God a praise like you the one. They come to church worrying about what the folks down the road doing what they looking like, what they acting like. I know what he's done for me. <laughs> That's why I like the song that says, while I live, <laughs> I will praise the Lord. Psalms 150 said that everything that have breath, praise ye the Lord. If you're breathing,
of 2 Kings, Prophet Elijah, his young prophets said that it was time to build because they were getting too uncomfortable. Stuff was too tight. You ever had a situation in your life that made you uncomfortable because it started to squeeze you? Circumstances started to get too tight. Your money started to get too tight. Close calls with the doctor. Life is getting too tight. See your days shortening. See time running out. Too tight. They said, this ain't no time for us to lay inside this place and die. It's time for us to expand the vision. It's time to get bigger when you get uncomfortable. Prove it to you. How many sisters in here ever had a baby before? How many sisters had a baby? Yeah. See that? And what happened? The more uncomfortable you got, the bigger you was getting because the discomfort was coming from your body being stretched in ways that it had never been stretched before. I dare you to look at your neighbor and tell them, oh yeah, I'm pregnant. Uh, look at your other neighbor and tell them, I'm expecting. And because your capacity was not built to hold that great big that's in you, your body has to learn to contort and to expand and to bridge and to blow up in order to hold what's got to come out. And the closer you get to bringing it forth, the more uncomfortable you become. And here's the real deal. You want the pain to stop. Talk to me. Talk, talk, talk to me, man of God. Can't stop till that thing get out. I heard the Lord say before Zion travail, she brought forth. Some of you are going to miss the labor process, but you still won't have the birth. Y'all don't hear me. So it's going to become uncomfortable either way. No matter how you deliver, you never escape the discomfort. Because the discomfort is the indicator that I'm growing. And the greater the discomfort, you start to measure it in time. Am I telling the truth? Here's an RN right here. She'll she straighten me up if I'm wrong. You start to measure the pain. Because now you're not just having great pain, now it's coming frequently. And so now we start to time that because when it starts happening more frequently, that's an indicator. Oh, this thing about... Y'all gonna make me have church by myself. <laughs> you having more problems, you having more issues, you having more circumstances, more headaches than you ever had in your life. That's because you're about to push it out. Y'all say, over here, hold on. Where you going with all of this? I'm going to tell you where I'm going with all of this. You coming to the close of the last of the old regime with us. We crossing over. Birthday on the same day, but he about seven, eight years behind me. Halfway mark. We done, done some things. We done seen some things. We was raised under the old school regime where they taught us that the birthing stools, and y'all remember the children of Israel, we talked about that around Christmas time. That the birthing stools was the place where they pushed out the babies that they were having. We were taught under the old school that the altar became that birthing stool. And those old mothers used to sit there <laughs> like midwives and they would nurse you all night long until you come through. Y'all like this to you. They would nurse you until you brought forth what was in you. And yes, it got uncomfortable. Yes, it hurt a little.
little bit. Yes, you lost a little bit of sleep. Yes, you missed some meals. Yes, you lost some time away from your own bed. But you did whatever it took in order to birth that thing out. And when they opened up the altar, that was the same equivalent as in today's time. If you go to McDonald's house and they open up the birthing room for you, they open up the maternity ward for you, it's the same thing. <laughs> because what's in you, it's got to come out. Pastor Tim, Pastor Melanie, some will struggle with the birth, but that's okay. They make C-sections for that. Some of y'all, because you lack the ability to push it by yourself, you ought to thank God for skilled physicians. You ought to thank God for skilled physicians who are able to cut and to help you bring out what it is you couldn't push for yourself. Oh, I wish I had a witness right there. <laughs> Skilled physicians to cut out what you couldn't get out because it still got to come out. Lord, help us in here, Jesus. <laughs> it's got to be birth. Now, of course, some will birth healthy, bouncing babies. And then there will be those who will birth a Nicobar. <laughs> it's not alive. But it's still got to come up. I'm teaching better than y'all responded. And I'm cool with it because that's what I come to do. He, he, he still got to come out. Be he dead or alive. It's got to come out of you. Now, here's the good part. If it has to be taken out and it's taken out the right way, there will be a process that we simply call the healing. That means that you have a scar because you carry the dead thing, but give it enough time and you'll be able to birth again. Y'all gonna make me shout by myself. Cause there are some of you, you know good and doggone well, you birthed some dead stuff in your life. There was some stuff that showed up and you was like the daughter-in-law of Eli. You said, oh no, that's Ichabod right there. Ichabod was an ignorant bob. He did everything but bring you joy. Did everything but bring you peace. He said, Ichabod, there's no glory there. You raised him in the church. He loved the pews of the courtroom more than he loved the pews in the house of God. He loved P.O. officers more than he loved the prophet. Y'all ain't got to talk to me. I got one too. I ain't going to throw no stone in y'all and not hit myself with one. You birth something dead. You put everything into birthing out that ministry. It died right in front of your face. The devil and all the hell sat there and laughed. Had a good laugh at your expense. But guess what? After the healing, <laughs> I get the birth again. Yeah. So I need 
what Jacob built at Bethel? I need the altar. The Bible said after he gets over the dread, we talked about that when I first got up here. I'm, I'm in the past attempt. Get us out of here. <clears throat> and when he builds that altar, the Bible says that he rests his head on that altar. He, let, he sleeps on the altar. Because of the abundance of the revelation, that now he sees that God is going from earth to glory, busting moves on his behalf. Now that he sees that he's going to become something great, now that he sees that his, that his enemy won't have rule over him. And the Bible said, most importantly, because he realized that God was here and I didn't even know it. He says, now that I know that God is here, I'm staying. I'm pitching a tent. That's why every time the preacher opens up the altar to you, you should be running to the altar. Because that is the place that is set as a memorial for God to do his greatest work. It is the birthing stool for you and me to push out everything that God has planted in us. And the truth be told, the only immaculate, the only immaculate conception was not just his mother Mary. You and me too. We're immaculate conceptions. <laughs> because what man couldn't do in the flesh, God did it in the spirit. And said, I'll birth them again. That's why you got to be born again. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? David said, he said, on the night that my daddy Jesse got with my mama, he said, that night, they was in sin. That's your book. He said, in sin, did they conceive me, so I'm born into this thing. I'm born in sin. Behold, I'm shaping in iniquity. I got a need to be born again. I feel led up the spirit that there are many of you in this room this morning who need that opportunity to be birthed again. You've had some failures. You've had some mistakes. And that's all it was. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. You, you, you were trying to go in the right direction. You were trying to do the right thing, but you missed. Funny that the word sin, Greek word hermosha, when we read in Romans 1, uh, Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. You read in Romans 6 to 1, you know, how shall we uh, continue in sin that grace may abound, God forbid. Sin, hermosha, literally means to miss the mark. Let me help y'all, because some of y'all may sit through this and not come to this altar today, but I want to make sure you understand what you're doing. If sin is to miss the mark, it is the epitome of the old adage that you've heard that the road that leads to hell is full of good intentions. Because in order for me to miss the mark, Brother Mike, I must have had to have first been trying to hit it. It's not transgression. I'm not perpetually dumped into sin. It's not iniquity. I'm not, I'm not leaning to always sin. But it's Hamasha. I've missed the mark, which means I was trying to hit it. Dr. Town, I'm trying, trying to hit it. But I couldn't. You know why you missed it? Because your adversary, the devil, goeth. And do I even need to finish the rest of that? He, he, he ain't going to sit still and let you bust him upside his head. It ain't that easy. He's a moving target. He can't sit still long because you ain't the only one that he want to mess with. He got to hurry up and get the sister Alicia. Gotta hurry up and get the sister Vicky, Vance Vicky. 
Got to hurry up and, 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 and get to the McKees' house real quick. Got to get to the McClouds. Got to get to Mother. Y'all don't understand what I'm saying. So he ain't going to sit nowhere long. Like any sucker. Start messing. Dip. <laughs> Start trouble. Throw rocks and hide his head. Y'all don't like this. You're trying to hit a target that's moving. And it is the picture of a warrior running in warfare. Has a quiver full of arrows on his back. He has a strap across his chest and the quiver, which is the, the long pouch, across his back and it's full of arrows. And he's running and reaching at the same time. In war, in war, running and reaching at the same time. How can he be accurate, Sister Mike, if he's running and reaching? And then to make matters worse, his target won't be still, Elder Town. Target is like, give me if you can, give me if you can. I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes hitting the mark will be the most difficult thing you do, but you better practice until you hit it. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? So sin just simply means that I was doing, I was trying to do the right thing. And again, it's not transgression. I'm not stuck in this thing, loving it, and just doing it because it's, it's not iniquity. It's not what, what, what I lean to do, what I have the propensity to just stay in no matter how many times you pray for me and throw all on me. Sin means that I'm trying to make it. But I've been missing. I want to open up this birthing stool. I want to open up this altar this morning to those of you who are honest enough and willing enough to admit that I could have been more by now. I could have done more by now, but I've been missing. Remember, it's not the sin that we, we go outside folks' heads with and beat them over the head with a Bible with. The dirty, rotten sinner. No. You tried to do the right thing, but the wrong thing kept coming. Do, do you even realize how long Paul had been preaching? How long he had been an apostle of Jesus Christ according to the chronology of the scripture when he writes Romans the seventh chapter? That boy had been preaching for a quarter of a century at the time he wrote Romans 7. That entire discourse, 25 years as an apostle in the Lord's church. He said, for the good that I would do, I don't do it. What you 25 year long preacher, apostle, and bishop, you mean to tell me after 25 years in the church you got to struggle? He said, yeah. Because when I go to do good, I got a problem. He said, evil always present. So he said, I got a war. I got a war. 25 years in, Townsend, he got a war. And then we want to beat up the folks when they come through the church, though, with their with they little issues and their little sins. We want to kill them before they get to birth it. We want to abort what's in them before it comes out. No, we ain't come to abort. We came to help you birth. 25 years preaching, greatest evangelist of modern times. He says that as a war in my members, he said, and they fight, he said, my mind is fighting against my spirit, and my spirit is fighting against the flesh. So, so it's like getting jumped, it's like getting two peaks on every side. Every time you swing one way, you, you take a cat this way, and then you come this way, and you take one. You take one to give one, and you get one to give one. And, and it's not, nice. he said, 20, 25 years in ministry. Battling with the flesh, he came to the conclusion around that 25th verse. He says, man, who going to deliver me? That's all the fasting I do, all the praying I do, all the preaching and the traveling I do. He said, who, who going who to get me out of this? He says, thanks be to God. Jesus is going to do it. That, that's, that's what we want you to understand today. Jesus is going to do it. He says he's going to deliver him from the body of that death. 
Now don't forget the same writer said in the sixth chapter of that same book of Romans, shall we continue in sin and grace to the bond? He said, God forbid. No, God ain't looking at that. He don't want that. That ain't what he's telling you to do. What he's telling you is you may have missed, but you can get it fixed. Because though you were born in sin and shaped in the name, you can be born again. And though you burst an Ichabod, you produce something in your life. You never thought your life would end up this way. You never thought your life would take the turns that it's taken. You never thought the stuff that didn't happen to you would ever happen to you. You just, when you was a child, you just knew God's hands was all on you. Me and my mother was talking the other day, and I mean, it's like, it's the story of my life. I remember very vividly being a little boy and understanding God's hand was on, knowing he was going to do something great in my life. But I did not know all of the other stuff that while God had plans for me, Satan had plans for me too. And there's many of you in this room that's like that. If you were to tell your testimony, it would blow folks' mind. How many times have I mean, you had that conversation? Can't even count. If people only knew what God had done for some of you, you would blow people's mind because life doesn't always end up the way that we intended to. But I declare that there are survivors in the house of God. You say, I may have birthed an Ichabod before, and I may have showed up and not given God his glory, but today I'm going to push out what's in me, be it dead or alive, it's coming out of me. I'm going to push it out of me. I came for it to be birthed again. Lost the ministry, but it'll be birthed again. Lost my kids, they'll be birthed again. Lost some money, but it'll be birthed again. Today you can get them all back. In 2 Kings, the sixth chapter was about the lost axe head. Simply put, he lost it, but the story didn't end that way. He lost it, but he got it back. The Bible said it was when the prophet cut down the stick, cut down a branch, and threw it at the spot. The iron started to swim back to him. There's some of y'all in here that some of the stuff you lost, we getting ready to throw some Jesus on it, and it's about to start swimming back to you. Yeah. Yeah, y'all thought Elisha just grabbed a stick out the tree. No, you must didn't read the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter, the first verse. But a root shall shoot forth from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow up. Y'all don't hear me. When he grabbed that stick, he grabbed Jesus and threw Jesus on the spot. The Bible says when he hit the spot, that's when the axe head started swimming back to him. Today we came to throw some Jesus on your circumstance, some, some Jesus on your situation, some, some Jesus on your life, some Jesus on your child, some Jesus on, on your children, some Jesus on your ministry, Jesus on your business. We came to hit the spot with the Lord today and your stuff is going to start. Look at your neighbor and tell him, look for it. Come on, tell him, look for it. It's about to be swimming back to you. God's going to start sending your children swimming back. Any of y'all in here got grown kids? You know they got the best of your stuff in them. They caught you at the height of your strength of your life. You gave them the best you had. You sacrificed stuff you wanted, you needed to make sure they had it. But God said, I'm going to make it swim. <laughs> you, you didn't invest it in business and You'd have lost money, you'd have lost time, you'd even lost health waiting, but, but God said, hold up! Uh, I'm gonna get in it and I'm gonna make it swim again. Ministry ain't been working the way you wanted it to work, don't sweat it. We gonna throw some Jesus on it and watch. Watch it swim back. God will allow what you lost to swim, but you gotta put Jesus on it. You got to grab the branch. He was born for that purpose. If you don't believe me, Isaiah continues to write about it. After he calls Jesus the branch in the 11th chapter, he goes to the 53rd chapter and he opens up. He says, and, 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 and he shall grow up before them as a tender plant, as a root out of dry ground. There's no beauty, no comeliness to him. 
that none should desire him. In other words, the most beautiful thing about Jesus was his anointing. He wasn't even a good looking guy. This is your Bible, y'all. I didn't make that up. Best looking thing about him is his anointing. His anointing is attractive. So he's pulling people towards him. So Isaiah makes it very clear who it is that Elisha is grabbing and throwing at the spot of the thing that was lost. And oftentimes we lose stuff and we get weary of searching. We lose stuff and we get weary. Look, you're looking at a man. I'm, I'm, li I'm a living witness. You get tired of looking after you done lost it so many times. But it's when you quit looking for it and start looking for Jesus. Jesus will send to you what it is that you need to have. And it'll swim your way. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's swimming to you. Bible said, if you see, you shall find. Before you go to your seat, one final thing. The prophet Elijah, who grabs a stick, who throws in the water, never thought that the message God gave me would simply be the altar call. How about that? The prophet Elisha, who grabs the stick, who grabs his bread from the tree, who throws it into the water to find the lost thing, is a man from a city called Abel Me Nahola. Abel Me Nahola. It literally means the valley or the meadow or the place of dancing. I might as well get ready. He is from a place called the place of dancing. Get this, y'all. Not only is he from a place called the meadow or the plains or the place of dancing, his name is Elisha. Which means that if I got Elisha in the house, I got God in the house. And he ain't just here posting up. Because Elisha means my God will save. Yes, yes. It gets better. It gets better. I'm almost through. I promise I am. Let me know. He is reflective of the God of heaven in your house. He comes from a place that all they do is dance. Here's what you probably don't know. The reason why they dance all the time. The Bible says, Pastor Melanie, that Elisha of the 12 tribes of Israel, he comes from one peculiar tribe. A tribe which the Bible testifies in 2 Chronicles 12 that they are experts in discerning time and seasons like nobody else. They know when God is moving. He is from the tribe of Issachar. He is of the sons of Issachar. They are experts in discerning times and seasons. They know the prophetic when they see it. They know God and you can't pull the wool over their eyes. They know when to move. They are the sons of Issachar. Within the name Issachar, at the very root of the name Issachar, is their granddaddy's name. Isaac. Look at your neighbor and tell him, have you been to the root? Sometimes you got to get to the root. To understand why you got a good reason to praise God. They are the sons of Issachar. They are experts in discerning times and seasons. They are from Abel Mihola. They know when to dance and they know why they're dancing. At the root of Issachar is the name Isaac Carr. So when the angel of the Lord comes to Abraham and his wife Sarah, he says, Surely this time next year, you're going to have a boy. The Bible says Sarah fell out loud. Sniggled and giggled to the point where she embarrassed herself. Take she embarrassed herself because you know what? Rap, God check. That's what you're not laughing for. She said, oh, I ain't laugh. You did laugh. You did laugh. I heard you laughing. So now since you want to laugh and play games, name the baby that. The name Isaac literally means to laugh. But when Leah has Isaac's grandson, Issachar, she says the reason why I'm going to call him Issachar 
is for this because it wasn't in the eyes, though that's good because she was able to laugh. Remember, Leah was the one that didn't look all that hot. Remember, Leah was so jacked up until Jacob went and had babies with his, with, with, with his, other, his, his handmaidens rather than to work something out with her. But when he eventually started having babies with her, she gets to that fifth son, and she names him Isaac Carr. Well, we already know that Isaac means to laugh. But the car, what do you do with your car? What about y'all? I get in the XTS and I roll. I drive, I go. You understand? Know she calls him Isaac Carr, and the full Hebrew translation of that name combined, listen to me. She, she says, the Lord has given me my hire. In other words, I just got paid. Y'all still ain't got it, because y'all would be in the Valley of Dancing right now. His name means, at the root, I'm laughing, but if I got paid, I'm laughing all the way. Y'all don't know when to shout. I thought I was in a sanctified church. I'm laughing, but I'm laughing all the way to the bank. So that's why they come from a land of dancing because all they do is get paid, get money, get blessed, give God glory, get more pay, more money, get more blessed, praising to more, get more money, more pay, more blessed. She said, I've been paid. So then here Elisha shows up and his name means God is my salvation. So you mean you're about to save me and pay me. Woo! So when Sarah has the boy, when she has the granddaddy, Isaac, who is at the root of the name Issachar, who Elisha is the son of Issachar. When Sarah has Isaac, when God tells her about the process, she told him, how in the world, this is what caused the laughter that got the boy named the laughter. Right, how in the world I'm going to produce this? And I'm old. Past my time. I don't, I don't know about y'all. I, 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 used, I used to I used to walk crews and swing around mic cords. We didn't have a lot of mics back in the day. I think I preach better now at half a century than I did at 20. Look at somebody and tell them I ain't getting older, I'm getting better. <laughs> she tells the Lord, Sarah says to God, she says, okay, I'm old, dried up. She said, not only that, she said, my, my master ain't got it like that no more. Yeah, here I am old, my wound ain't even open. I can't do nothing. He said, my master, even he older than me. I'm dry, he drier than me. I'm dead, he deader than me. She said, so here's the thing. You may drop by and send the baby over here, but how do I, she said, I can't even have no pleasure producing it. God said, okay, I'll show you better than I can tell you. <laughs> and at this appointed time next year, not only will you have the baby, but you'll be able to testify you had the pleasure that got it. Y'all, please hear what I'm saying. You trying to work some stuff out, you gonna get that thing, but God gonna let you have a little bit of fun while you're getting it all worked out. Ain't nobody like that. Look at your neighbor and tell him, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Tell him, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like He's my friend. Come on, put your hands together and give God a prayer. God bless you today. Turn into the hands of Pastor and First Lady. Hallelujah. Give God a praise. Put your hands together and bless God for your breakthrough. Praise Him like you got your breakthrough. Praise Him because it's swimming back to you. Praise Him because you're going to be laughing all the way to the bank. And all your haters and naysayers, you can roll down your window and wave at them and tell them, watch me. I got saved. And I got paid, I'll holler.